have the session Integrated Approach to Sustainable Building Construction by Ms. Shaili Mahera. Ms. Shaili Mahera is an architect by profession and has done her post-graduation in the field of energy efficiency and sustainability from CEPT University, Ahmedabad, where she was awarded with Distinguished Student and Best Thesis Award. With over eight years of experience in the field of climate responsive architecture, she has successfully handled a wide, wide array of job responsibilities ranging from evaluation of high performance buildings, data assimilation, analysis and site audits. Currently, she is working as a deputy manager at Griha Council, where she has been working on the development of Griha rating variants, policy guidelines and has been conducting capacity building programs for various stakeholder to promote sustainability in built uh, environment. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ms. Shelley. Over to you for your session. Integrated Thank approach so to sustainable much, building construction. Thanks. Thank you so much for the introduction. And thank you, everyone, for taking our time for this presentation today. I'll just quickly. Hello, everyone. This is Shelley Mahira. I am an architect by uh, profession. And I'm working in the capacity of deputy manager at Griha Council, as Aparna has already introduced me. So today I'll be speaking on integrated approach to sustainable building construction. And uh, when I say integrated approach, I say it for two reasons. First of all, we will talk about the interlinkages between various stakeholders. In this case, uh, we will talk about Griha, MSMEs and United Nations set SDG goals. And secondly, we will talk about the interlinkages within the green building system. So with this, let me just quickly take you through the contents. This is going to be the flow of the presentation today. First of all, we will have a brief introduction. This is going to be brief because we've been doing MSMEs and understanding MSMEs all these days in this uh, summit. Then we will talk about Griha rating. Then we will understand the avenues for MSMEs. We will look at the way forward. And with that, we will come to the end of the presentation. So the first thing that I'll talk about is the introduction to MSMEs. All of us are aware of the contribution of MSMEs in India. But I'll quickly take you through that. Uh, MSMEs have been significant in India's GDP. About 64 million units in MSMEs. We have contributed about 30% 30, 30 to the GDP, created about uh, 70 million uh, employments in India and manufactured around 6,000 products, which contributes to having 45% manufacturing outputs and about 40% of exports in India. So clearly it is significant to India's GDP, has been doing great roles, but are there any negatives or let me just call them potential for MSMEs. Uh, it, is, it is said as per a report by Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change in India, as per a report in 2016, that about 78% of India's total emissions till year 2010 were from MSMEs. So we clearly see there's a lot of potential for MSMEs to bring those emissions down. Now, when I'm talking about India, what are the commitments that India has made during the Conference of Parties or the COP that we, uh, we all know? We've said that we will reduce our carbon, carbon emissions by the year 2030 for to somewhere about 33 to 35 percent and we've clearly seen the contribution of msmes when we talk about carbon emissions so there is a lot of scope for them we know there is going to be a significant role for msmes in this particular presentation we will focus on building and construction sector as we are talking about sdg 11 where we are trying to create sustainable communities sustainable cities so when we say building and construction sector, first of all, let's just understand what is the scope for this industry. It is from a report by the United Nations Environment Program, which was released in the year 2017, that says that about 35% of global energy use is by building and construction sector, and it contributes about 40% towards the energy related carbon emissions. And you can see that the blue one, the blue bars that you see in the different color variants are the construction or the floor area increases that are about to happen. That is from year 2017 to 30. That means there is a lot of scope for building industry to still address this issue of carbon emissions. And since we are talking about MSMEs, we will understand how are they going to be a part of it. So in India, when it was uh, the conference of parties were held, 
at that time india knew that the carbon emissions from the building in the industry sector in india is about 22 percent at that time india realized that it has to really work hard to bring that carbon emission down so from buildings india had announced that griha is going to be the national tool to mitigate carbon emissions and that is how griha council comes in or the griha rating comes in so griha basically was released in the year 2005 by the energy and resources institute and was supported by the ministry of new and renewable energy it was a body created to certify green buildings now when i say green buildings what does that mean green buildings are essentially the buildings that stay in harmony with nature they do not disrupt the nature but make the best use of it without harming it so it depends on renewable resources it uses the natural site contours it uses the trees around it and the benefits of these green buildings is such that it is said and through studies it is said that they help in reducing the electricity consumption by 40 to 60% the water consumption by 40 to 80% it minimizes your building's dependency on local corporations for water for energy etc and maximizes resource efficiency through waste management now anybody can call their building green but you need to evaluate and understand that what is the difference between a conventional building and green building that's where griha rating or any rating for that matter comes in they will evaluate these buildings based on certain standards griha rating when i say is called as green rating for integrated habitat assessment and works as a tool to evaluate the performance of green buildings and this is done under various sections i will take you through those sections later on in the presentation this rating when it was developed it was developed keeping various international and national codes as the basis so we have national building code in india we have energy conservation building code or ecbc as i would call it later in the presentation with support of ministry of new and renewable energy and we have followed the codes from bureau of indian standards for various materials etc when we developed this rating it was it was this the uh, it was developed keeping in mind the national action plan on climate change now we've talked about griha rating understood how it works how it was developed but why am i going to talk about griha rating in this presentation because we will take msmes reach that uh, we will make these msmes reach the sustainable development goals through griha rating how are we going to do that let's just understand that now griha rating is basically developed to build green to build sustainable so when i say building green and when i say building sustainable there is a difference when i'm talking about building sustainable we are focusing on three major pillars of its sustainability that is your environment that is your economics that is your social aspects that is how you build from green to sustainable and considering all these various uh, various variants of griha have been developed the griha variant for small projects is swa griha then you have large projects which need to be evaluated so for that we have griha then we have griha for affordable housing then we have griha for existing buildings and then we have griha for cities so in all of these variants we will keep in mind that we will address the environment economics and social aspects and the end result should be such that it addresses resource efficiency circularity and above all innovation which is the most important key right now for us doing all of this we know the sdg 11 goal is to attain safe inclusive resilient and sustainable structures this is how we are going to go about it so griha will take us to sdg 11 and not just sdg 11 basically griha rating has been developed in a manner that it addresses all sdgs and if you all are aware of uh, the good life goals which are one step before sdgs then griha has been aligned with that as well this is for everybody's information here now moving on to relating griha with msmes so first of all we we'll look at the various industries in which msmes work the ones that you see in blue are basically the overall msmes and then the ones in red are going to be related to the building sector so we all are aware that already in the socio economic aspects we are doing, doing fairly well with respect to msmes but when we talk about the environmental aspects are we doing any are we are we lagging behind somewhere 
So we will look at that and we will understand the scope for MSMEs. So in this presentation, we are not just going to focus on how to reduce emissions from MSMEs, but through MSMEs as well. So we will essentially keep these areas in mind and then relate it with Griha rating and then relate them to SDGs. Coming to Griha rating. So when Griha addresses, uh, evaluates green buildings, what does it work on? It works on evaluating the sustainable site planning sections. It works on evaluating uh, water efficiency measure, measures, energy measures, waste measures, social aspects. And then in the end, we talk about performance metering and monitoring. But overall, we above all, in fact, we will talk about in a innovation also in green buildings. So moving on to the avenues that we have for MSMEs. We will talk about, we will keep in mind that we are talking about manufacturing and the services unit. We are talking about the building materials units in MSMEs, that is your steel section, that is your uh, cement sector, etc. So here we will talk about low impact building materials. What all scope does MSME have in that? Then we will talk about energy systems. We will talk about water management systems, waste management system. And in the end, we will talk about the services area where MSMEs can come in while creating green habitats. So we will focus on resource efficiency, circularity, and most importantly, cost effectiveness as well. And then, of course, you know, innovation is going to be the key player here. Talking about low impact building materials. So in Griha, when we talk about construction materials, we talk about materials on site that mitigate, that help in mitigating urban heat island effect and that help in addressing urban flooding issues through roads, pedestrian pathways and surface parkings. Then we will talk about materials that go into building an envelope and interiors. So we will here talk about structural system, masonry units. We will talk about fenestration and interior materials. When I'm talking about the envelope, we will pay attention to minimizing or optimizing thermal gains. And then when we are talking about interior materials, we will talk about, this is a future goal that we will talk about eliminating deforestation. So let's just look at the areas in which building materials are used and where all can MSMEs manufacture and where all innovations can come in. So when we talk about roads, we already have materials such as high solar reflective index uh, paints. So you can paint your roads and your uh, it can reflect back the direct incident rays and keep the environment cool. When we talk about permeability in order to combat urban flooding, we do have permeable asphalt, we do have permeable concrete, but they are not very widely used because of the cost factor. When we talk about the roofing, we do have modified bitumen, we have mosaic tiles, uh, we have reflective coatings and paints. Uh, when we talk about pathways, we have interlocking uh, concrete pavers, we have permeable pavings. But the challenges come when we have to talk about both of these issues, the urban heat island effect and the urban flooding effect. So there are still not a lot of material that address both. So first of all, we will look at both of these things. When we are saying MSMEs have to come in, they can manufacture the, these materials. And the way forward for them is through innovation. So they will have to bring in materials that can address all of these issues and yet have stress and uh, yes, have strength uh, mitigating uh, strength to them. And in the end, the most important thing becomes for consumers is the cost effectiveness and availability. So when all of these things are addressed, the way forward issues, then there is something new that is happening that is that is going to help in attaining sustainable built environment. When I'm talking about building envelope and interiors, then we will focus on structural concrete. So when I'm talking about structural concrete, essentially, we have come a long way, you know. In India, if I talk specifically, we used to have these uh, walls which used uh, stone or bricks. Then we had steel later on to give structural strength to the system. And now with innovation or with uh, focusing focus on environment, we have these bamboo concretes as well. When we talk about masonry units, we've come a long way from the Harappan, the Indus Harappan civilization, where we used uh, sun-dried clay bricks. Then we came to red bricks. Then we had these AAC blocks. And now you have materials such as hempcrete. So you look at the journey that we have come through. This is important for MSMEs to understand that there is always scope for emissions, uh, innovations, I'm sorry. And when we talk about fenestrations and interior materials, we, we are essentially trying to focus on eliminating the use of hardwood so that we 
eliminate deforestation completely. So there is a lot of scope here as well to bring in new materials that are as good as wood, but not co coming from trees directly. So as you are aware that there is something called as Forest Stewardship Council, they are also working in the same lines. They know that people will not stop using wood. So they have come up with having sustainable forest. Something similar or better could be done by MSMEs for the future. So we are talking about materials that have good strength, because of course you're talking about building structure. Then you're going to talk about the thermal and the acoustic performance of your buildings. And then you definitely have to focus on the life cycle of that material that involves the processing, extraction, and in the end, operation and disposal. So innovation again becomes very important over here. Moving on to the energy system. So we've completed the low impact material part. Now we will look at the energy systems that make your building green. Here, when we talk about Griha, we essentially focus on the energy systems and the lighting systems. So first of all, the first step to make a building green with respect to energy systems is efficient envelope. We've already spoken about the materials that go into it. Now we will talk about the systems that go into it, the energy system, the lighting systems. They need to be ECBC, ASHRAE and NBC compliant, the National Building Code compliant. So if you are bringing in such materials, you will have to bring innovations as, uh, as well. I will show you how. And then in the end, we will talk about after we have minimized the energy consumption or we have optimized the energy consumption, we will talk about offsetting it through renewable energy sources. So in this, I will essentially talk about the major uh, energy consuming uh, systems because we have paucity of time here. So I will focus on HVAC and the lighting part. And we will look at the journey of various systems that have fall, uh, come under HVAC and lighting systems. So uh, the first in-home air conditioner that was released, uh, that was invented in the year 1914 was quite bulky. It was noisy and it had a lot of chemical use. Since then, HVAC industry has seen a very good evolution. We have come, uh, the next was the window AC, then you had your split ACs, centralized air conditioning, and then to address the issue of energy consumption, consumption we had this radiant uh, HVAC systems. So the evolution has come considering energy consumption part, the ease of use part, the indoor air quality part, etc. When we talk about lighting, we've come from natural lighting being used in buildings to uh, fire lit torches, the two candles, to gas lamps. So all of this journey, again, when you look at this journey as well, we are addressing various issues issues of pollution, issues of indoor air, issues of disposal. When we talk about moving from CFL to LEDs, we are addressing the issues of disposal as well. So MSMEs can definitely contribute in this and can look, look forward to having a more energy, a more innovative energy and lighting systems that are based on ECBC, NBC, ASHRAE, materials that are cost effective. So if you know that um, long back, the LEDs were sold in 1500 per LED, and now they are coming down to, uh, to, they have come down to 250 rupees. When I'm talking about Indian national rupee, then they have come down to 250 INR. So if the cost effectiveness part is there, if the awareness part is there, then in that case, you can definitely have a market for these materials. And now when we talk about HVAC, there is something else that has gotten added because of the COVID-19 situation. And that is about having clean air. A, 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 we want to have air free of bacteria, viruses, etc. So again, a lot of scope for MSMEs here. Now we will focus on the water management systems. Here we will talk about efficiency and water usage. So the first step that uh, Griha focuses on is about reducing water uh, inside your building and on your site. So we will talk about low flow fixtures, then there, there are efficient lighting, uh, sorry, landscaping uh, equipment, and then reducing water during construction. Once we have reduced water consumption, we will talk about treating and reusing sewage water and then we will move on to recycling rainwater. So when we're talking about building water fixtures, the journey has been such that in the beginning, that is before 1990s, we had flushes using seven uh, gallons per flush water. And then we have come down to, uh, you know, water fixtures using only 1.3 gallon per flush. Similar has been the case with showers. So there is a lot of scope here as well, but the key, to, uh, key here is to address uh, user satisfaction as well when you're talking about innovation here. Moving on to sewage treatment plants, there is a lot of scope here. I will quickly run you through this presentation. Uh, again, in water section, user satisfaction is very important. 
then when we talk about rainwater harvesting here the climate type uh, becomes very important so innovations have to come in sync with the climate type as well when i'm talking about waste management system which is very important to understand this is one example from gazipur uh, landfill in india so you have to reduce your waste first of all then reuse it on site and then recycle it uh, recycle it then there are a lot of systems available msmes can definitely contribute here and the way forward is that you can still bring out new innovations here you can bring out innovations here and then the last one we will look at is project management and performance metering and monitoring again the services sector in msmes can work on bringing a project management for green buildings and green cities so a lot of things have happened here we have bms systems digital and analog systems so innovation here as well now the way forward how to achieve sdgs through msm uh, through griha for msmes you will have to focus on life cycle and innovation and that is how we are going to attain the sdgs thank you so much and i'm sorry for uh, exceeding the time limit uh, no problem no problem thank you so much ms shelly for that uh, very interesting and eye opening session i think griha is doing a great job towards uh, achieving the sdgs and we are proud to have griha as a partner in the summit and we have a lot to do together in the future as well thank you so much for joining us today thank you and now let me invite mr